Hey, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? We are sure glad you're here. It's a good crowd. Would you please, uh, would you stand with us? And uh, we're just going to join in prayer and uh, worship the Lord. Amen. Father, we are grateful for uh, just everything you've done for us, Lord. The blessings, God, our, our health. You know, whether we're sick or not sick, we're still here, we're still breathing, and we're grateful for what we have, Lord. And, and for anybody that is sick this morning or has someone in their family that's fighting an illness, God, we just lift them up to you right now and, and ask that you would just heal them, God. You're still our provider. You're still our healer. You're the great physician, and we ask that you just touch the bodies of those in need, Father. And, uh, God, we just pray that you would inhabit our praises this morning, Father. And uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. We love you, God. Amen. Here we go. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be. Blessed be your name in the mound in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing and every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, oh, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, and blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Oh, in every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Oh, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Oh, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Oh, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Oh, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Amen, Lord. Amen. Father, you are blessed. You guys sound great this morning, by the way. I can hear you even over the drums. That's pretty cool. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God
church, church, let's, let's not miss this moment. Let's not miss what God's doing here right now with his Holy Spirit. I don't know what you came in today with. I don't know what kind of pain you came in today with, what kind of sorrow you came in today with, but I can tell you that Jesus, Jesus will raise those things to life. He wants you to be healed. He wants the broken things restored in Jesus' name. So we're going to sing this again. And whatever part of you is broken, whatever relationship you came in with that is broken, any wounds that you have, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. He will raise those things back to life. Let this be the cry of your heart, church. Open your mouth, church, and declare these truths today. Open your mouth and declare these truths today. If you need Jesus in your life, open your mouth, church. With everything you have, cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Let's sing it again, church. Oh, cause Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise All who calls my name No more sorrow, no more pain I will rise eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise and I will rise oh Jesus has overcome because Jesus has overcome and grave is overwhelmed the victory sing it out church sing it out sing it out he is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God falls. victory today. Let's give it up to Jesus. Let's give it up to Jesus. Let's give it up. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Woo! Welcome to New Life Church. Amen. Amen. So glad to see all your faces, to see you here today. Thank you so much for sharing your morning, coming, seeking after something fresh from God today. All those online, thank you so much for joining us as well. <laughs> um, man. So excited, so excited for what God's doing. Before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's just take this time to do tithes and offerings. So ushers, I uh, just invite you uh, to the front, please. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God, we just uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather as a group of believers in your house. Lord, we are, you are so great, and we're so thankful for all that you do for us. And um, this moment to give back to you is a pleasure, and it's an honor, Lord. And we just lift it, this offering up to you so that you can spread your love to those in our community beyond the walls of this church. And we lift up Pastor's message today, and may it touch our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, let's get into some announcements. So th every Thursday night from 6.10 to 7.10, we do a Spanish service. So it's absolutely amazing. God's doing a good work. He's growing out. I think we got close to 10 people now attending every week who English is not their first language. So they get together. They read out of God's word. They worship. They pray. 
Um, it's just a beautiful thing, and I'm so grateful that we are able to use this space to provide an opportunity for people to know God um, in this community who Spanish is their first language. So it's absolutely amazing what God's doing there. Maria Valiant, who uh, is our preschool director, she's, she wears a lot of hats. She's a wonderful woman of God. Uh, if you haven't met her, meet her. She's, she's an amazing person. Uh, she's back there with the kiddos right now, but she leads that up. So if you know of anyone in the community who is a native Spanish speaker, who doesn't have a church home or wants to seek after God, whatever that looks like, we welcome them. We would love to have them here. Uh, so please make that um, known to those people in your life. Once again, that's every Thursday night, 610 to 710. Uh, fellowship dinner. So if you were not here last week, originally fellowship dinner, a.k.a. me burning some barbecue. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't burn stuff. Um, <laughs> that was going to be scheduled today, uh, but I am flying out today. So today is my last trip. I'm super excited. We're going back to Denver uh, to pick up my baby, Finn. And we're going to be flying back on Wednesday. Maya and her dad are going to be driving back uh, same time. So hopefully she'll be back maybe by Sunday, maybe after that. I'm not sure. And all this. But this is our last trip. And then my family's made whole again. So um, you'll definitely see my son. Yeah, right? Oh, been, been longing for that. Yeah, I've been longing for that. So I'm super excited. But I can't, all that to say, I'm not going to be here tonight. So I had to reschedule our fellowship dinner. That's going to be next Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m., it's going to be doing ribs as long as I can get a smoker. If not, we're doing top ramen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I'm hoping for ribs, so hoping that smoker comes through in Jesus' name uh, so I can treat you guys to something yummy. Uh, but more important than the food is what it is about. So the family time the, around that kitchen table is just for us to talk about what God's been doing in this church the last four or five weeks. What is God doing? What is the vision? What is the purpose? What is the Holy Spirit talking to us in unity about in this church? It's not just what I'm saying, it's about what the body's saying. So if you want to attend to that, if you want to be hearing what God is uh, birthing in all of us, and you want your voice to be heard, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what God's doing, what he's birthing inside of you, the, the excitement, your ideas, whatever it is. This is your church. This is our church family. So this is a time for us to get together and just talk about this next season for us all together. Um, as well is we're going to invite it uh, up to the students, so 6th grade to 12th grade. They're going to come too. We're going to feed them, and, and we're going to have board games and probably play some basketball out in the parking lot, uh, make it a really fun time. So that's going to be not this Sunday, but next Sunday, right? 6 to 8 p.m. Also, we are doing uh, Wednesday night prayer. So every Wednesday night, uh, 5.30 to 6.30, we're doing prayer. God's been doing a really cool work, man. This last Sunday was really powerful for those who joined. Um, we actually had a blackout. And it was crazy. Like, we, before we ever started, the whole power went out. Next door, the, like, some meter or something, whatnot, blew up in the technician's face. Thankfully, he's okay. Yeah, thankfully, he's okay. Um, apparently, it happens all the time here with, like, salt and rust and all this other stuff they were saying. I was like, <laughs> remind me to never do electrical work at the keys. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he's like, yeah, no big deal, dude. <laughs> I was like, all right. Uh, but so we had a, <clears throat> we had a blackout. And... Um, Whole, everything was dark, so we're like, all right, well, let's just do prayer by candlelight, and it was super special. Uh, we were able to dig into the conversation of what prayer, what we were expecting God to do in our personal lives, in the church, talk about some of our own personal struggles, and it was just a beautiful th uh, time for us all to get together in that place of prayer, praying over the church, our leaders, our, our city leaders, all those things. So if prayer is something that you want to dig deeper in with God, and we'll kind of talk about this in today's message this is the path on how you do it, okay? You can't get to where you want to get to unless you put energy and you're on the right path to get to where you need to get to, amen? So if you're wanting to learn how to pray, you don't know how to do it, you don't know why we should do it, you don't know what the Bible says about it, you are uncomfortable praying out loud, or any of these things, if prayer is just a, a, a tough thing for you, period, you should be at Wednesday nights. We're digging through that. It's a place for us to be real with each other, be vulnerable with each other, be uh, saturated by God's Holy Spirit and being um, in that place to discover it. So we're doing micro ser sermons around prayer, you know, what the Bible says and teaching about prayer and learning about what prayer is, but also actually doing it. We're not just knowing it, but we're being doers of his word. Amen? So uh, if that's something that interests you, please make it a priority. We also have it a, a Zoom, uh, available on Zoom as well for those who can't physically attend. Also, youth group launched last Sunday. We need to applaud for that. 
That was amazing, dude. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, we played Ultimate Frisbee, and I thought I was going to have, like, a heart attack. Oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> I was drenched in sweat. I had no idea humidity hit so hard here. Like, I've been, I heard about it, but I was literally, like, wringing out my T-shirt, playing Ultimate Frisbee. It was a great time. We probably had a little over 20 students show up. Uh, yeah, it was incredible. So we had a squad, dude. We had a team. Like, it was going hard. And uh, we got some cool pictures. I meant to do a slideshow, and I, I just got to say I was busy and I forgot. But I'll, I'll make sure to bring them up again uh, next week. We're doing kickball this Sunday, so that's going to be a fun time. So same park, Marathon Community, 6 to 8 p.m. We're doing sandwiches, kickball, uh, Kirsten, John Robert going to be there. We've got a, a few other leaders because I'm not going to be there because I'll be on a plane. But, yeah, so it's 6th to 12th grade. Any students that can be there, please show up. We'll feed you. We'll have a good time. And then the following youth event is going to coincide with the fellowship dinner. So, you know, we're going to do a little a whole family sit down, eating foods, playing games. And then that the next Sunday for youth is going to be at the first youth service. So we're going to have a time where all the students are going to come here. We're going to have music. We're going to have a message, get together. And we're also doing the giveaway for the Nintendo Switch. So every youth that comes... They get an entry into the raffle. If they, every friend that they invite, they get an entry into the raffle for every week. So there's, there's been a lot of, oh gosh, I probably had like 40 entries or something last time. It was crazy. But this is, this is really fun. I'm really excited to see what God does for the youth here in the community. It was a good time. So that is going to be every Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. And then finally, um, I'm going to touch more on the, on the meat of this. But we're going to be launching small groups here in about two to three weeks. Um, I'm going to build out the curriculum. Really excited. For those who don't know what small groups are or why it's important, the big thing is it's a dedicated time in your week to meet with fellow believers in your area who are doing life just like you're doing life and who listen to the same Sunday message that you listen to and will keep you accountable, will keep loving you, will be there in your vulnerability, in your issues, in your, in your amazing moments, in your testimonies to do life with you. This, this is not what just church is, you guys, attending a service, spectating a service, listening to one person on stage talk. Real church happens in the other days of the week what you, with what you really go through, what your struggles are actually are. And I'm just one person. I can't be everything to you. That's why we need small groups. We need these dedicated people that will be there for you, that will love on you, that will keep you accountable, that will go through the scriptures and read it, and, and you can actually develop each other. So we're going to be launching that in two to three weeks. I'm very excited. I don't know days or any of that stuff, but this is a teaser. So in the back, we actually have sign-up sheets. If you are interested, and I very strongly encourage you to be interested, please go back there and sign up. I would love to chat with you more about it. All right. Uh, let's take the next two to three minutes. We're all going to stand to our feet. We're going to hug some necks, shake some hands, high fives, dabs, whatever we do. Amen. <laughs>
right, church, let's get back, let's get back to our seats. So let's go ahead and bow your heads with me as we pray over today's message. Father God, I just thank you so much for who you are, God, what you're doing in all of us, what you're doing in this church, this city. Uh, just pray that we can be receptive of what you have for us today, um, that I can receive a fresh word from your Holy Spirit, that you speak through me, Lord Jesus. Uh, let this time be fully about you, glorifying your name, giving you praise in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, church. So today is week one of The Path. So if you heard last week, we handed out some books uh, from Pastor Andy Stanley called uh, The Principle of the Path. So I know some of you did not get books, and I'm so sorry I meant to order some, but I got busy with trying to set up travel and stuff. But I'm going to be ordering them again. So I uh, definitely want to make sure if you're interested in a book, it's a gift from us to you so you can be reading along. It's a wonderful book that this whole sermon series is built around. Um, it is also available on Audible for audiobook, if that's more your flavor. I'm an Audible kind of guy, so I get it. <clears throat> but I'll have more books next week. So we're kicking off this sermon series. This is called The Path. And it's going to be a six-week journey. We're going to kick it off in Proverbs. So if you actually want to just turn to the book of Proverbs to prime the pump a little. Uh, what this sermon series is all about is making sure that as we go, into this new season, this new direction, this new path with New Life Church and us individually, that we are actually going to something. We're not just wandering around aimlessly saying we're doing church, talking about doing church, you know, all this stuff, but we have a, a, a divine purpose, a divine direction from God to know that we are going to something, something good, something better. Amen? Because a lot of times we can think we are on a good path, but we're not. And we're going to talk a little bit more here in, that, here in a few moments. But Proverbs, I'll give you a little, little backstory of Proverbs. If you're not aware, it's a book in the Bible. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it's Old Testament, okay? Um, it's around a few other books. You got Job, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, um, all that fun stuff. And those are a lot of times referred to as the books of wisdom or the literature of wisdom. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel like I always need more of that. Amen? Real wisdom, not just good ideas or insights or a self-help book or some man telling me, hey, do this, do that. I need biblical, divine, godly wisdom in my life. And there's a major difference between knowledge or intellect or being smart and having wisdom. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, myself included, we know what's right and wrong, right? We know good, good ideas, bad ideas. We know what's a good decision and what's a bad decision, yet we constantly do the wrong thing because we're lacking in wisdom. So wisdom is taking that knowledge and getting it inside of us internally for what is the eternal consequence of our decisions. So we need to have wisdom, and wisdom comes from experience, you can either go through something and get on the other side of it with a lesson, or a lot of times we can have secondhand wisdom when we have people pour into us because they have already gone through that thing and are telling us their experiences and giving us a lesson from, their, from what they've been through. So Proverbs is a secondhand wisdom book. When we, when we talk about reading through this and we, we dig into the study of this, Realize that in this book that we, re or, or this chapter that we're going to be reading from is from uh, Solomon. Solomon is a lot of times called the wisest man that ever lived because he made a lot of mistakes. Amen? 
And he went through a lot of hardships and afflictions and woundings and hurting people and being hurt to learn that wisdom. So praise be to God that we have a book that is divinely poured into through this broken man so that we can hopefully hedge ourselves against those harms, hedge our loved ones against those harms and hardships. Amen? So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. I'm sorry, 1 King 4, 32 through 34. It says, he also spoke 3,000 Proverbs, this is referring to Solomon, and his songs were 1,005. The dude had an album list, right? He had a discography. He was probably like the uh, hill song of his time or something. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssops that grow out of the wall. He spoke also of beasts and of birds and of reptiles and of fish, And people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of Solomon and from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. So this this is a man who was so broken in his brokenness, so torn up, that God used him as a vessel, as a mouthpiece. In this olden time, he would be considered a prophet, someone that was allowed to speak on behalf of God. Now, we, t- we take that for granted a lot of times now, that the fact that we can in any moment connect with the divine, connect with Jesus, connect with his Holy Spirit, and not only talk to him without sacrifice and religion and all of these steps and things that we have to get exactly perfect. We can talk to him, but he talks back. You hear what I'm saying, church? That he talks back to us, and he sees us, and he hears us. And he wants to talk to us. So what Solomon was experiencing is that in this moment, this beautiful moment, he was receiving the voice of God. Natural wisdom does not exist. This is divine. This is from God himself. So think, keep that frame of reference in mind as we read these words from Solomon. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 7. In the book, Principles of the Path, from Pastor Andy, the the message of the book is all about the fact that the road we're on determines where you will end up. Let me say that again. The road you are on will determine where you end up. That sounds pretty simple, right? So, like, if we go west, where does that take us? Key West. We go east, where does that take us? Miami. Miami. Right? If I go east and I want to go to Key West, am I going to get there? No. Bad news bears, I'll have to turn around. Vice versa. But why do we treat that simplicity of our GPS and our geographical directions and the geographical paths that we're on? It's like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. But why is it that when we go on different paths with ourselves, we are expecting different results? So if you are wanting to have a deeper relationship with your spouse, or a deeper relationship with someone in your life, and you are on a direction, on a course, to where you never talk to them, where you hardly connect with them, to where you actually carve out time because they're valuable and worth it to spend with them, yet you're expecting the results that are going from a different path, a different direction. You hear what I'm saying, church? What is it that about us that we can treat these simplicities with, with our everyday life and miss it with God. Same idea would be like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds because the holidays, I got a little fluffy because, you know, gravy and sweets and all this other stuff, right? The path would be eating salads and hitting the gym and probably drinking more water, you know, simple things like that. But yet, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're still hitting those, the gravy, still hitting the cheese, still hitting the carbs, the sweets, the donuts, and all this other stuff, and you're not going to the gym. So the path you're on, the road you're on, hasn't changed, but you think you're going somewhere else, and you're expecting somewhere else. And where does that lead? But to disappointment, to being upset. Our direction, not our intention, determines our destination. Your direction, not your intention, determines your destination. This is from Pastor Andy. So what I mean is, like, we can have all the good intentions we want. All the good intentions. 
You know, I want to do this. This is the right thing to do. Um, great, but what are you actually doing? What are you actually doing one step at a time to get you to that destination? We're going to dig into this here. Proverbs 7, verses 6 through 9. So this is a very pretty graphic description of a, a story of a young man that Solomon sees out of his bedroom window, or out of his house window. It says, For at the window of my house I have looked out through my lattice, and I have seen among the simple, I have perceived among the use, a young man lacking sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, young men lack sense. Young women lack sense. You're young. I mean, when I was young, I thought I knew everything, but I mean, truth be told, right? You don't. You don't, and you only, you only realize you don't when you, when you look at the hindsight of all those bad decisions, those bad directions, those bad paths that you've been on. So this is exactly what Solomon's talking about. He's an older man. He's been through some stuff. He knows exactly. He sees this young man out of his window saying, oh, buddy, you're hanging around this neighborhood looking at trying to find this woman. I know exactly where this is end up. You don't need to be a Bible scholar to put two and two together, what this you know, young man is chasing after, what the consequences of these decisions are. But did the young man have sense? Did he have wisdom? He did not. So let's keep reading. Passing along the street near her, her corner, taking the road to her house in the twilight, in the evening, at the time of night and darkness. So we can kind of imagine what kind of her we're talking about right here. Right, church? And in the twilight and the evening, nothing really happens good after 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? If we're being honest, nothing, nothing good happens after 10 o'clock. 11, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., that's, that's the bad time. That's bad times. So that's exactly what, what uh, Solomon's looking at this young man. It's probably like, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning. He's trolling the streets of, what's that one square in, in Key West called? Mallory. Mallory, thank you. Mallory Square. He stops at that certain house. You're like, oh, buddy, oh, buddy, you know. So he, he's seeking after what he thinks is just a momentary thing, a momentary gratification, but let me tell you, church, that there is no such thing <clears throat> as momentary consequences. We can be in a moment, and we can sin, and we can think we're going through it, and we can justify anything. There's literally nothing on this, in this world that we can't justify our sin through. You don't understand, Pastor, this happened, or this person said something, or I'm dealing with XYZ, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, we're like pro Johnny Cochran's when it comes down to like how you want to get through your sin or justify your sin so that you don't feel so bad. Well, I don't care how you feel. There's eternal consequences to your sin. It's not an emotional thing. We don't base our relationship of righteousness versus sin on our emotions, do we, church? It's about what does God's word say? What is the actual truth of his word? So this young man was all up in his emotions, all up in his feelings, thinking that he would live forever, and he knew exactly what to do, and he knew best and Solomon was like, buddy, you're setting yourself up for some serious heartbreak. You're setting yourself up for who knows what kind of consequences are going to come from this because Solomon had been through it. So there are always consequences from our decisions, from the past that we take, because they're going somewhere, church. These are past. These are well-worn roads. This book is well over 2,000 years old. The truth still remains the truth. Because we as human beings have been doing the same old, same old, same old thing, thinking we're smarter, thinking we're more clever, and we can justify or talk our way out of whatever, but the same sins has been the same sin since, <laughs> since the garden, right? But why is it that when we're on this path and we see the signs, we ignore them? Because we don't think we're on a path, do we? We think, I'm just doing this, I'm living me, YOLO, whatever, you know, Y2K, whatever you want to say, <laughs> you know, it's just a momentary thing. I can come to church and I'll pray for forgiveness and, you know, I'll be good. Nobody needs to know nothing. It's secret. Is it though? I don't think so. All these things come into light. The Holy Spirit will always, 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 always bring it to light. So if that's the case, the consequences are coming from the paths that we take because the destination is either death or it's life. Hear me, church. It's death or it's life. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, and destroy. 
and he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking for your moment of weakness, seeking for when you're slipping, seeking after you for when you can, you can maybe justify a little something, something. Make an excuse for a little something, something. Because you deserve it. Or whatever that looks like to you. But let me tell you, it's either death or it's life. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs 22 through 23. All at once he follows her. As an ox goes to the slaughter or a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver. As a bird rushes into a snare, he does not know that it will cost him his life. I'm going to read that again. All at once he follows her. As an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast, till an arrow pierces its liver, and a bird rushes into a snare, he does not know that it will cost him his life. There is always a cost. So let me... There is always a cost to it. Let me show you this right here. You know what this is? It's a cow skull. Cow skull. Okay? This cow went to slaughter. Its life is gone, right? This cow's dead. Would we all agree? I don't want to be hung up on somebody's wall. I don't want to be a trophy to the enemy saying that he got me, that I got caught up in a snare, that I got led to slaughter. In Jesus' name, we will not be led to slaughter. Amen? Amen. Let this be a visualization to remember that these decisions will always have a consequence, death or life. Proverbs 7, 24 through 25 says, And now, O sons, listen to me, and be attentive to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. Okay? Paths. This young man thought it was a momentary thing. He was on a path to death. Solomon knew that. The things that we do in this life will lead us somewhere. It's guaranteed. Where are you going? What are, what are the things that you are doing today going to lead you to? Or better yet, what are you justifying that you're not doing? And where is that apathy taking you? Where are those excuses going to take you? Proverbs 7.27 says, Her house is the way to Sheol, going down to the chambers of death. Shoal in the Bible is also another word for hell. That is not our home. That was never meant for us, church. Our eternal place is in heaven. If you believe Jesus is your Lord, and he died for you, and he was resurrected, your home is in heaven. Do not go chasing the keys to hell. That is not your home. That is not your place. It was never meant for you. No matter what glitters or what distracts you or what entices you, church, stop chasing the keys. That's not where you belong. That's not where you belong. That is not your house. You are the children of God. He paid a price for you. How dare you forget that? How dare us? He paid that price. It is already paid. It is already paid. death or it's life. The book speaks on a few examples that I wanted to touch on today. So let's say you are, you're a single Christian, you're a girl, you're a boy, seeking after a healthy Christian relationship, and you want a godly man, you want a godly woman, you want a healthy marriage, yet every time you date somebody just because they think you're cute or because you think they're cute. You're chasing after these relationships. You're freely giving yourself to these relationships when that's not how we do godly relationships. We should be reserved because you have a worth that is bigger than just giving yourself away freely and often. Let's say you're in a a marriage and you have a spouse 
and you so long to have a deeper relationship with your spouse, with your husband, with your wife, yet you never spend actual time with them. You're always distracted by what the kids are doing, sports, different things like that, and you neglect your spouse. You hardly ever talk to your spouse. You hardly ever carve time out for your spouse. You've chosen what path to go on, yet you want to go on another. That doesn't change unless you change it, church. If you want more time, if you want a better relationship with your spouse, you have to change direction because you're not going to change your destination unless you change your direction. Amen? Let's say you're in a, in a relationship, maybe newly married, maybe married for a long time, and you are striving to have a healthy financial situation. You want to retire when you should retire. You want to own your property. You want to have some investments so you can have peace financially. Yet you don't know how to balance your checkbook. Or you don't even know what I'm saying to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't even have a budget. You just be spending money. You living off your credit cards, living off taking cash advances, paycheck loans, taking on, taking on way too much debt because you don't have any financial discipline. And then you're, you're wondering why your relationship is constantly at war about money and bills and stress and paychecks because you don't change your direction. You're not changing your habits. You're not changing the steps you take to get to where you actually want to go to. It has to happen. It has to take energy. It has to be purposed. You have to be a doer in that situation. Let's say you're in, you're in high school right now, sophomore, junior, senior, right? College is being talked about probably, I mean, maybe even earlier than that, right? Depending on your family, you could be talking about college and elementary school. All these, all these things, like some, yeah, sometimes it's, it's a lot of stress on the, on the students. But let's say, you know, you want to go to college. Let's say you want to pursue a degree. But you're not doing the extra work. You're not studying. You're going out partying. Staying up late, playing on your phone, playing on Instagram, playing on TikTok. You, you're not on the path to get to where you want to be. Amen? Same thing. If you, wanna, if you want a deeper relationship with God, and I'm guilty of this, but the first thing you do is you, you crack open your phone and you get on Instagram, you get on Facebook, you get on different social medias to see what the world's doing when we need to hear what the Word's doing. I'm going to say that again. You want a deeper relationship with God, yet the first thing, the first thing, when you open your eyes and your feet hit the floor, you grab the phone and see what the world's doing on social media, newspaper, Facebook, whatever. The first thing you do is check everyone else when God says, hey, check in with me. And you wonder why you don't have that relationship, why you don't have that depth, why you are shallow. And I say these things, church, because I pray in Jesus' name you're getting some conviction that the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart right now because he wants you to be on a different path, that he sees you and he knows you, and God is timeless, beginning, middle, and end, that he knows that you can be at that destination, but only if you surrender your will to his and you actually do what needs to be done. So God wants to see you hitting your destination. You have arrived. Yeah? But it takes work, church. So listen to that con conviction. If there's any disconnects in where you want to be and where you're actually at, let's do something different. Ushers, if you guys could um, go ahead and... Oh, I didn't talk to you about this this morning. <laughs> my fault. My fault. There's, there's some goodies over there by Kim in those little containers. Uh, yeah, I think I see a box of them. Yep. Secret spoilers. Okay, if you could just gather them around and just pass them out to everybody. So I have a little a token, you know, just for, just for this time. So they're going to be passed out to you. And I'll, I'll be telling you about what all that means. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. 
They're they're not for they're not for the original purpose. Yeah. So I have questions as those get passed out. What direction are you heading in today? What direction is your morality headed in today? Your financial situation, your relationships. What is where are you actually going? The proof is in the pudding. You know where you're going. Acknowledge where you, you're at. The only way that we can change is if we open our eyes and see the signs and recognize and own it and say, yes, I am off course. I am drastically off course. The Bible says if we open our mouths and confess our sins and repent, that we can be forgiven. Amen? So if you are off course, open your mouth. And confess to that brokenness. Confess to you being off course. Say, Jesus, I am so sorry. I am so sorry that I did this, that, I, that I've been talking to this person this way, or I haven't been spending enough time with my spouse or my daughter, or I've been missing the, missing the boat when it comes to spending more time with you, or miss, miss, uh, mishandling my finances so I can be a good steward of your finances that you've been giving me. Whatever it is, you have to open your mouth and acknowledge it. It all starts there. Don't be too prideful, church, to say I'm sorry, to repent with God, because there is a different path that will lead to life. But if you're too prideful to acknowledge it, you're just going to stay stuck. So let's pray for that real quick. Would you join me? Lord Jesus, I just pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, as there's conviction, as there's things churning up inside of it, that it's about your grace, it's about your mercy, that you call us, you know us by name, that you want us to have life and life abundantly in Jesus' name. So allow us to be bold, allow us to be broken, allow us to be repentant towards those things, Lord God, and give them to you and run to your cross, Lord Jesus, for what you have for us in this new season, Lord God. Let it be started here today that we repent and we say we are sorry God, that we have been on this broken path, this wrong path that leads to death, that leads to hell, Lord Jesus. So allow us to see the beautiful direction that you really want us to go, God, the destination, a, a healed marriage, a, a, a house built on sound financial decisions, restored relationships, restored salvation, Lord Jesus, whatever it may be individually to us, God, call us to that right path. In Jesus' name. So some of you may be asking yourselves, well, how, how do I choose this right path? How do I even, how do I recognize it? The first one that I want to speak into you is you have to get wisdom. And let me be careful. Like I said earlier, wisdom isn't what I'm saying. Wisdom isn't what a book says. Wisdom is what the book says, what God has to say for you. So what we're doing, and I charge you to participate is we're going to be reading Proverbs every day. There's 31 chapters in Proverbs. Most months have 31 days. So we're going to treat it as a daily devotional. Amen? Today is the 29th. Let's read the 29th chapter. And we're going to go from there and start with it and read it and carve out five minutes of your day to spend time with God. I don't know about you, but I waste way too much time doing absolutely nothing. Checking my email rearranging my pen drawer. <laughs> I, have, I have mild case OCD, so that's like a real thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, scrolling through Facebook, seeing this, seeing that. Spend five minutes and dedicate it with God to say, Lord, I'm hungry for your wisdom. Lord, I want to know what this new path looks like. Let me receive it, God. Let me have a heart to hear and ears to hear your wisdom for my life from the experiences of other godly people through your word. Amen? The second one is getting in a small group. Please, please, please. There is so much value. There is so much value in a small group. Church, to me, is more about small groups than it is about Sunday service. Okay? It's about getting in a community people that you can cry with, people that you can live with, people that you can celebrate God's glory and the testimonies of your journey with. Here in Marathon, 
every day, every week that you can call, that you can text, that you can FaceTime, that you're going to somebody's house to have lunch or have dinner that you can bring your kids to and they can play with other kids and that you can actually develop life, a Christian life with, that you're not isolated and just go to work and nobody, you're, you're stuck and you, nobody's speaking life into you and you come to church and you hear a good message and then you go back to your week and nothing happens. You become dull. You become dead. Your, your fire fades and then you get lit up again on Sunday. That's not healthy, church. You need to have life. You need to have people in your life that know exactly where you are at. Good things, bad things, ugly things, all the skeletons in your closet. It's a relationship. Small groups groups are critical. They are critical. So please, please hear me when I say this. Everything is going to hinge on this for this next, for this season of this church, that you make small groups a priority. I know we're busy, and that is an excuse. We're all busy. There's a lot of good things. But didn't I say earlier that intentions don't matter? You can have good intentions. You can have good plans. You can have good excuses as to why you're not doing something. But don't be surprised if you are making an excuse to stay on the same old path and you keep doing the same old thing. If you want something different, do something different, church. Amen? Amen? So do something different. Make time. Figure it out. Ask people for help. If you're like, I, my, my schedule's so packed, I have kids, I have this, that's what a small group's all about is helping you so that you can develop a relationship and community in your community. But if we don't ask for help, we won't get help. And if that starts with me, it starts with me. Say, Pastor John, I want to do this, I just don't know how, and we'll figure it out. All right, I'll figure it out. I'll watch your kids. Whatever it takes to get you in a small group. Absolutely, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll watch all the kids. I'll have 30 kids in here, and we'll just wreck everything. If it means that you can have a deeper, intentional relationship that's going to change your life, amen. Yeah, we'll do, you know, whatever it takes. You know, whatever it takes, church, we'll get it figured out because that's how much it's worth it. Think about this. When Solomon saw that young man trolling those streets of, what's it called, Duval Square? No. Mallory Scott, Duval somewhere else, right? Duval Street. Okay, yeah, Mallory Square, Duval Street, you know, wherever that debauchery happens. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. Um, if, if this young man had had a small group, don't you think they're going to be like, hey, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing over there? They would have ran after him. They would have texted him, called him. Where are you at? Why are you, why are you at where you're at? Seeking what you're seeking. Are you an idiot? Let's get it right. That's accountability, but it happens when you have a small group. He was just a man flying solo. And a lot of times we get caught up in the snare. We get led to the butcher because we're by ourselves. Because it's real easy to come against us. If the enemy is a lion, it's real easy to come against us when we're doing that, when we're by ourselves. But when you have two or more around you, mm -mm. no, sir, no, sir. We can watch each other's backs. We can be praying for each other. We can be looking after each other. So if this young man had had a small group, he would have been saved from death. That's the cost. That's the reality of it. Number three is make decisions based on the long term, not the short term. So what I mean by that is every decision has a consequence. Whether it's a consequence you have to pay, or your children have to pay, or your grandbabies have to pay, there is a price to every decision. There is a consequence to every decision. So it's time that we wake up, church, and think eternally, that we think about what we're doing. Are we building life? Are we making graves fuller? Are we raising people up? Or are we breaking them down? It's about the eternal consequences of what we're doing. Worship team, if you guys please join me. All right, and I'm sure you guys are finally wondering, dude, what's up with the fork, right? <laughs> what's this? It's not for snacks, it's not for the brownies, I promise. What this is, is a physical representation of your life. That every decision, you are at a fork in the road. 
what path are you taking? So whether this fork stays in your car, at the desk of your work, you punch a hole in it, make it a necklace, I don't care. Keep it on you as a visual reminder that every decision, you're at a fork in a road. What path are you taking? To what destination? Is it death or is it life? Because it only leads one of those two places. So keep this fork on you. Be reminded when you see the fork, be praying for the wisdom from God to be able to make the right choice to go down the right path that leads to life. Amen? So what we're going to be focusing on throughout this time is the two things, right? What's, does anybody remember number one? Reading Proverbs every day, starting with what chapter? Hey, all right. Chapter 29, every day, treat it as a devotional. And number two, small groups, sign-up sheets in the back. I'm not asking you guys to do anything other than tell me you're interested. And I pray that those sheets are full. It's super important, you guys. You have to be involved. I don't care if you're here for two months or if you've been here for 20 years. Get in a small group. Don't waste this opportunity because you are only here for a few months out of the year. God has called you here now. You are here right now, right now, for this time, for this time. There's a lot of stories I've heard of people building relationships and lifelong friendships from people who are, who are colliding in this church through random times. God can use you here. When you get back home, you can have a prayer team. You can have a small group in different places geographically. Could you imagine what God's spirit can do if you had multiple small groups around, pouring into you with prayer, loving you, hearing about your life, surrounding you. That's how we do big things, church. So don't allow yourself to justify a reason why you shouldn't put your name on that list. Put your name on the list. Make time for God. Make time for what this new season is um, and what God is going to be calling us all to. If you guys would all uh, stand with me, I just want to pray over this. So we close the service. And bow your heads, please. Father God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for, for who you are. You're tenacious, Lord Jesus. You are just so jealous for us, God, that you chase us down and you'll use any means for us to come back to you, to our first love. So I pray, God, that you would illuminate all the areas of our heart, of our mind, that we have drifted away from, that we have disconnected from you, that you encourage us, that you allow us to pull those places back to you, God, back into the light, that we can run into this new path in Jesus' name, that you pour wisdom into us, life-giving wisdom through your Holy Spirit, God, more, more of your Holy Spirit, more of you, Lord Jesus, so that we can chase after life, God, that we can bless those around us. Bless our community, God. Let your name be glorified in our workplace, at the gym, at Publix, wherever we're at in our schools, Lord God, that we can run after this life, Lord Jesus, and we can run after this new direction that you have for us, God, what you're doing here, what you're building in this church, what you're building in this city, God, because more people need you, Lord Jesus. But it starts here today. It starts today. No more, no more excuses, no more justifying why we shouldn't. Well, maybe I need to wait. Maybe I need to do this. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. No more shall we wander away. We come after you today, today, today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified, worthy is the next week, Lord, uh, that you would bless tonight with the students, Lord, that you keep them all safe, that we can have a good time playing kickball, uh, just be with me in my travels, I'm just so excited to bring my family back and, um, for what you're doing here and for them to be here in this place. So we love you, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so next week, uh, we're going to do part two, we're going to uh, talk about what does it look like when you are on the wrong path. And how do we actually snap out of it? So please come back next week. We're going to continue this message of study in Proverbs. All right, be blessed.